Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this tutorial I wanted to show you one way I might shoot a complex room. Now this is just some practice, obviously, during the off-season I'm shooting in my own house. There's actually a nice view, although it's somewhat limited. So if I was going to shoot this particular hallway, and it's got this view, and you can't see it right now in the video because of the blown out windows, because of, of what we're shooting right now, it isn't lit up. It really is a pretty nice view of uh, Montclef Ridge out in Wildwood Park. And so if I were to shoot this house and it's got some of these nice views, I'd want to include them. So what I might do is have somewhat of a composition here showing, yeah, where the hallway is in relationship to another bedroom that's down there, and also then the views outside. So this is actually a princess outlet that's right here, and that's kind of common with some of the architecture in the community where this is. So you might want to see that through the Princess Outlet you'd have these beautiful views. Now, I could do it a number of different ways, and I've shown in uh, other tutorials how I would do just using one Young Nuo speed light, how I would pop around and I would do window pulls and all that. Well, there's another way I would probably do this. A lot of times when I'm downstairs in these two-story houses, I'm not using that. I'm either using a, a Rove light or another bigger similar light to it like the 8600. And so if I were to have that and I'm already shooting downstairs, right before I'd run up downstairs, I'd set that guy up because it's a big open area down there. And that's where I have him set up right now. This is what he looks like. So here we are downstairs, and before I'd move upstairs, like I said, during my workflow, I'd probably be packing this guy away, but it's like, hey, we want to get this one type of shot. I'm just going to leave this set up down here, and I'm going to just leave the adjustments run upstairs like I did, and we'll just fire off that, that one last shot of using this then to our advantage downstairs. And all that it is, once again, it's just an 8600 flash point. You could uh, use this... Um, uh, the Rove light as well, it's 600 watt seconds. I've only got it at half power, so there's plenty of light. This has a bigger reflector on it than what you'd find on the Rove light, so it's got a wider spread of light. And I always leave the diffuser on, and it, it really does help because it's going to diffuse some of the light going out in some of the other directions. So that's just the setup just left on this stand. If it, during my standard workflow, after I was done with that shot, I would just come downstairs and just pack that up and just finish off the bedrooms upstairs with just using some simple uh, handheld uh, Young Nuos. And that's all there is to it. So let's get back upstairs and finish this off. Also in the far room, down here in the bedroom, I've got another one of these Young Nuos. I'm shooting those two at full power. The 8600, it's only at about half power. It's very powerful light, so I don't really have to worry about that. So with that much light and to be able to get a quick exposure outside, I'm going to shoot at ISO 100. That's almost unheard of for doing interiors and real estate, I know. But with that then, I'm only going to need two exposures. I'm going to need a, uh, an ambient that's going to be able to show me the direction of the light so that I get the luminosity out of it. And then I've actually got the flash shot. I don't have to do window pulls and I've then I've got a good view outside. So I'm going to show you from start to finish what this would entail, which really isn't much. Just this light setup and then we get started. So first thing I would do, and I'm not using a cam ranger on this, I know that it would make life a lot easier in a lot of ways, but I still haven't gotten quite used to using it uh, for just running around interiors real quick. Um, that day will probably come, I'm sure. But in the meantime, I'm using once again just cactus triggers to wire uh, shutter release and of course cactus triggers on a different channel which are firing all the flashes. So first thing I would do is I'd go in, I'd make sure that I've got my focal point, I would compose it all real well. I'm going to shoot this, we're at um, ISO 100. F8, and I'm at one-fifth of a second. And I'm just going to fire off that ambient shot. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. I might go ahead and actually get maybe another exposure just to, to get one a little bit less. Uh, maybe, let's say, two, one uh, over 2.5 uh, of a second, like half of a second or so. And that's not too bad either. Pretty good. Histogram looks pretty good on that too. Pretty well even. So I just might use that as my ambient shot. Now, all I have to do is fire off a flash shot. Now, there might be some twiddling and stuff, and this is where a cam ranger could come in good, or if you also have a remote for your lights uh, to, to have control. And I know that there are all do all uh, remotes for that. For me, I've got such a collection of triggers and lights, I kind of know where things are supposed to be, and I can chimp it in close enough. And then we're going to correct some of that in post. So I've got the Young Nuos at full power, we've got this guy downstairs at about half power, and all that I'm going to do is I know the outside would probably expose real well at about 1 60th of a second. So what I'll do is I'll just get a, what I call the repair shot. This would be for the windows. So I'm going to go ahead and get this up to 1 60th of a second. I'm going to fire just an ambient shot, make sure we're there. Yeah, 
That looks good. I like that. So I can actually see a nice blue sky. I can see Montclef Ridge in the background. So now I'm going to go ahead and just turn the flashes on by changing the channel up here on my transmitter. And then once I fire that off, boom. So now we've got pretty well lit. Not too bad. I could probably get a little bit more light over in this area, but we can fix that also in post. So now let's take a look at how I'm going to edit just those two frames to get the shot we want. All right, so we've got our footage now, and once again, it's just two frames. It's just a simple flambient. I know this might not seem like a shortcut, but for me, during the workflow, it would be, since I'm already using that big guy downstairs and lighting everything up. So let's take a look and see what it would be like without any window pulls. Once again, just two frames. Let's go. So here we are with our two frames. I've already imported this into Lightroom. We're gonna go through start to finish everything that I would do for this picture. So we can see here is our flash frame. You can see it's definitely flashy. Look what happened up here with all this shadow. And of course I can fix that in post, but this got me through the house fairly quickly without having to also mess around with window pulls. And, and actually some of this editing will then be faster because of it. It's not the best lit shot. You can see we're missing light down here, but we'll be able to pick that up with our ambient layer. We'll be able to pick that up nicely. In fact the ambient might even be better than what we have in our bedroom with that other light over there. So we might mess around with that, although this shows a little bit of a corner of a view that goes out those bedroom windows. And if this was really for the MLS, then I would be uh, uh, maybe showing, you know, this bedroom and showing more. And actually, I do show this bedroom on another one that I do with the uh, just one single light to do the whole kit and caboodle. So anyways, let's get started. First thing I would do with this is I have a simple preset. Have you seen me do this, use this before? And it's just really for lens correction. So I'm just going to click on that and make sure that everything looks okay. And it does. All that this did was just your, your standard uh, lens correction ones. Just, just review that real quick. It's just your basic stuff down here. Enable profile corrections to remove the chromatic aberration. And then, of course, to uh, do the verticals. And, you know, the verticals look out fine for me right here. We, we could maybe uh, change that just a tad on this side. But I'm really happy with it. So what I do, there's a lot of ways to do this, but I just go ahead and I right click on here and I say develop settings, copy settings. Now I might have, I'm going to copy all the settings. I might have more than one frame here and that's why I do it this way. I know some people like to use the sync button when they've got more than uh, two uh, selected here like this. This allows me though to just keep track of what I'm doing. I know where I copied it from. Maybe it's just an OCD thing or habit, but anyways, uh, many different ways to skin a cat. Anyways, selecting them both, develop settings and paste settings. And now I've got those two frames ready to edit. I just right click on them, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now, since I'm only working off of two frames, and these were shot in RAW, they're kind of big, it's not going to take as long to load these up and do everything else I need. Now, since I wasn't using a Cam Ranger, it's a good idea for me to auto-align these. So, I've got an action that I've made. You could select all these layers and go to Edit Auto-Align, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit my F2 button, which calls up my action. And by the way, I've got a, another tutorial on that. Look up the one called Actions and Presets, and you'll see where I do that. So anyways, those are aligned real nicely. Now, normally I would take this layer, which is my ambient, and the flash layer is on the bottom here. Normally I would say, you know, let's turn that to luminosity. So we would do that, but look what happened. When we get in here to the right side, we could see that nasty shadow just won't go away. So I'm gonna also duplicate that layer real quick. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Control J, duplicate it, shut that off. I know that's my luminosity. This guy, I'm going to put back down to normal. Now, you can see that there's still a little bit of an orange tint, and that we'll, we'll uh, correct that later. And that's actually fine. For MLS, probably wouldn't even matter. But I could also do a color match to, to get this even more accurate. But since this was the only problem area, I'm fine with it. So I'm just going to go layer mask hide. And now I'm going to take a brush, and like I usually do, I'm going to use a fairly low flow. I'm going to go down to 8% on that flow, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to paint in where that shadow is uh, is all hosed up here. So we just paint that in real quick. Not a big deal. Once we get enough of that shadow down, then the luminosity can come in and fix the rest. So in fact, I don't even have to do it here because when I turn the luminosity on, you can see it's not affecting it. It's still affecting it here a little bit with that luminosity. I can see it's not quite getting it. So I'm painting once again on our repair layer for that. So that's good. Now, the luminosity layer, just layer mask hide. And let's start painting in some of that where we like it. First thing, let's correct these shadows. So let's go ahead and paint that in real nice right there. And we get rid of those shadows. They go away. 
Once again, the luminosity, it's, it doesn't have the color to it, it has the light. And so that allows us to fix that. Now, we want to fix this all down here, this downstairs area. By the way, our light was way down here hidden. So let's go ahead and bring some of that out. That was really nice and ambient, so we could see that. Yeah, it brings it all out real nice, fixes some of the shadows then where we were hitting that really hard with our 8600 down there. And also, I wouldn't normally light this up on the side because the focus is really outside the window, but we'll bring a little bit of ambient in here. And also, let's see if we can fix that shadow up here. Just an extra little shadow that was uh, cast from that the chain on the chandelier. So that looks pretty good to me. I, I, I'm pretty happy with it. Maybe I'll bring out a little bit more here. I could. If I do though, I might get shadows and sure enough, yeah, for me, that just looks a little bit yucky. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and just let that be. Over here though, let's take a look at what we can do. Is this going to look better with the ambient in this room? Eh, probably not. I actually like the flash a little bit better, um, just the way that it showed in there. So I'm pretty happy with this. We could we could play all day and all that, but really got to get this thing moving. Got to get these products out to the customer. They're wanting to get this thing listed. You got to make a profit off this stuff. You can't be here all day doing this, although I love it sometimes, especially if I'm cranking music. So, all right, we've got that go, going good. That looks pretty good. Now we've got the nice view outside. Now I want to pump that view up even more. Normally I'd be done, but you know what? Let's take it a step further. Let's take our background layer, Control J. We're going to call this one ACR. Why? Because we're going to do some Adobe Camera Raw. So let's go in here to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Now, in here is where everything you could do in Lightroom, you can basically do it here, except you really don't have brushes. So we're going to make a layer, make a mask, and then paint it in. So let's go up to Effects. And what am I going to do? The famous dehaze. Boom, you can see what dehaze does, really makes that sky pop. So we'll just really dehaze the living crap out of it. And it's not the best looking, kind of a stormy sky, but you get the point. It might uh, give you a little bit of that bonus. Now, the whole picture's dehazed. Eh, it doesn't really look the way that I want it to. So you go layer mask hide. I'm gonna zoom into this area where that is, and I'm gonna grab my brush tool and I'm just gonna start painting in where I want some of that. Now I could probably get real fancy and I could cut this out by using a, a polygon tool on the mask and, and all that, but you know what? A little bit of overlap. When you're using a low flow brush like this, you're really not gonna notice it with small changes like for something on uh, an Adobe Camera Raw's uh, the, uh, dehaze feature. So a lot of that's not going to really matter that much. Anyways, we've got just a little bit of pump right there. It was this. Now we just got just a little bit more pump because this was the view. This was the thing we really wanted to have highlight out of this whole reason why we took this picture and, and had that monster light downstairs so we could light up the upstairs. Like, hey, we want to really show that. Not necessarily the neighbor's rooftop. But anyway, so there we go. That's looking pretty good. I'm happy. We got to get on to the next picture for our delivery. So let's go ahead and flatten this. We'll go. I could say this is a Photoshop file but let's not. One last check on luminosity. Go up to the luminosity layer, shift click. You can see the difference. Are we missing any luminosity we want? Maybe I will put a little bit more downstairs. Nah, it's fine for me. A little bit more for the hallway if we want. Maybe down here. Yeah, why not? Just a little bit added right there right before we go. Now, go up to edit. Excuse me. Go to layer. Flatten image. Boom. Control S. Save it. Now, we're back in Lightroom. And there's our picture. And then I used the famous secret sauce, the idea I got from Rich Baum. You can check out his videos too at Rich B A U M Baum, and you'll find a whole wealth of information for doing real estate stuff. So I'm going to use the full bump, what I uh, originally got from him, and boom, that's not looking too bad. But there's a couple things here, it's a little bit too contrasty. So, you know, I'd rather bring down the contrast a little bit and some of that clarity. The other thing too is some of this is just a little underexposed for me. So I'd like to go ahead and bring that up. But first off, we were talking about this little spot here that's still orange. That's bugging me a little bit. We could have also corrected the shadow better. But this right here, that's, that's also bugging me. So let's take this, let's take a saturation brush. Let's take that saturation down and we'll just paint in a little bit over the ceiling and boom, that's all gone now. So that's great. I should have really corrected that shadow more in post. But the other thing I want to do is I want to light some of this up just a little bit. I don't want to up the entire exposure. I could, that might also look good. So instead of being 0.1, let's say that if I went to, let's say 0.3. Now bear in mind, my clients like bright pictures and that doesn't look too bad. That actually looks pretty good. But I could also take just a small little smidge of exposure, let's say at uh, 0.2, and I just go over this area right here. 
right, just to add a little bit extra punch, make it look like the sun is really starting to come in through those windows, boom. So that's not looking too bad, I like that. I'm just gonna crop it though just a little bit so we get just a little bit better composition on this. We're really trying to show the windows, not so much the hallway, so I can crop some of that out. That's looking pretty good. Get less ceiling in this picture too, and I like the looks of that. So let's go ahead and export that puppy out. File, export. I'll put it in export and I will just call it 1.jpg and let's export that out and once it's exported out our final product looks like this. Now for some of you it might have seemed like it wasn't such a shortcut, I had to have a big light involved with this, I had to fix some shadows but I only had to take two frames. I only had to take really an ambient shot and then a flash shot. I also got some really high quality out of this. You might be saying, ah, they're gonna see it on a little cell phone. Eh, not always. I have clients that have their slideshows going on some of the big screens as some of their open houses are going on. So they like to have the high-res photos. In fact, our MLS went to high-res photos completely, so there's no size limit on what they can use even on posting. But either way, no matter what you're doing, this is just one of those alternatives, one of those other things you could do. If you're in a pinch, you don't want to do the window pulls, and also to be able to show you the power of using a big 600 watt second light. Wouldn't recommend it in all circumstances. And there are times where you do want to have a mood and some shadow. For my clients, that type of picture to be able to showcase this big open space, nice and bright, some views outside, most of my clients dig that type of stuff. Anyways, I hope this video is helpful to you and you can pull some things out of it that you might be able to use in your workflow or in your hobby or for your work as it is doing real estate photography or what else. Anyways, if you did like this video, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, and as soon as one of those videos is posted like this, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, get out there and shoot something.